From the wholesome Yakuza babysitting show to the torturous nature of Maiden Abyss, from the wonders that is Licorice Coil to the shining nature of Shine Post, there is so many incredible shows this season. Not just the returning shows, all these great shows that are getting four seasons, second seasons that everybody just absolutely adores, but also returning shows like Tokyo Mew Mew and Ruby finally getting an adaptation. The summer 2022 anime season is absolutely incredible, and it's very hard for a lot of people to navigate what is good and what is not so good. And after thoroughly checking the season, looking through all the titles that we currently have available to us, I am here to give my top favorite shows of the season so far. So if you're one of those people that unfortunately doesn't have time to watch 40 plus shows in a season, this is a good way for you to get a digest of what to look out for, which titles are really working out so far. In this video, I'll be going through my top 10 most favorite shows that are new in this season, as well as getting into the continuations following that. As always, I would love to hear from you guys. Let me know down in the comments down below which shows are working out for you and which shows you're anticipating every single week. With that said, let's get into it. For my number 10 of the best new shows of this season, I have Prima Doll. Prima Doll is a series that so far on the surface looks like it could possibly do something really good. This is a course from Studio Key who is known for doing things like Clonod and Angel Beats. So you know they're gonna establish these really cute girls with some great personalities before they, you know, destroy your heart later on. But so far it looks really good. Burberry Studios is doing a great job of really animating these characters, making them very lovable, very enjoyable to kind of watch as they do these cafe stuff before eventually getting into what the overall story is. We kind of get a sense that in this world, they use these robots to fight wars for them, including these things known as automaton, which are basically these very beautiful girls that they would sit out in the battle. They would actually control all the other machines in the area to where they would fight for them. And following the war, this ex-soldier decides to reprogram all these automata to work at their cafe, kind of wiped their memory, cleared out all the memories they had of their previous war, or at least he says they did, but I'm seeing that some of them are actually bringing up a lot of these memories. But they work at this cafe for them, while at the same time, you do get a little sense that there is a war brewing up in the background. Hitting on a lot of the past experiences and the memories they've lost is really seems to be the core thing that they're getting into that really is hitting the emotional points of the show. And with how good it looks, how lovable the characters are, I'm really looking forward to what they'll do next. Despite the fact that it's key and they're just going to try to make you cry. Number nine, I have Engage Kiss. This series started out really strong. Now, unfortunately, the second episode kind of dropped a little bit for me. And I think a lot of the problems the show has centers around its tell don't show kind of mentality. But under the surface, there's something under here that I'm really looking forward to. This is an original series by A1 Pictures. A lot of the animation looks absolutely incredible. The characters are a lot of fun. It's got the chemistry there. But episode three does leave us with a huge hook that I'm really interested to see what they do with. Essentially, it's on this man-made island where they found this resource. And unfortunately, while they're getting this resource, they uncover the existence of demons. And the government's trying to keep the existence of demons under wraps. And so they hire these people to go in, take out these demons, and cover it up. We follow a guy that actually utilizes a demon, this demon that lives with him, that fights for him. And because they're so powerful, the government was kind of forced to recognize them as one of these companies that will take down the demons. And the hook that was in the third episode is that we find out that every time they fight, this main character has to give up part of his memories as sort of a cost to grant power. Every time somebody makes a pact with a demon in this world, they have to give up something, their life, their limbs, their talents. And for him, unfortunately, he has to give up his memories. And it's kind of tragic in the idea that his previous loved one, who's still always seeking him out, he's lost all of his memories of his love for her while he's granting it to this other demon that loves him. So it makes kind of wonder, does this demon love him because of his memories of his loved one? <laughs> It's hopefully going to get in some really interesting stuff in the future, but the animation is fantastic. Some great combat sequences. A1 Pictures being an original series, they're dumping a lot of budget into it, and I'm really interested to see where it goes. Like I said, it does have some flops in the storytelling so far, but there's a hook there, and I'm really curious to see what they end up doing with that hook. Number eight, I have When Will Ayumu Make His Move? This is from the creator of TZ Master Takagi-san and In the Heart of Kunoichi Sabaki. This is somebody that is known for their art style of the forehead girls. <laughs> but I love every single one of them. But this is definitely a different take from this creator. In the idea that it's similar to TZ Master Takagi-san where a lot of the skits are kind of around one character doing something just to throw off the other character. But in this scenario, it does seem like mutually both of these characters love each other. It's just they don't want to say it. The whole stick is that Ayumu left his kendo club, joined the shogi club just to be with his senpai. And while he does outright say that she's cute and she looks great and everything like that, 
He doesn't want to say that he loves her. He's actually put a preventative upon himself that he won't confess until he beats her in Shogi, which sucks because she's really good at Shogi. So it kind of turns this whole thing where she's constantly trying to throw him off and he's constantly throwing her off all while they kind of spend time together. It's really establishing a relationship really early. It's just nobody wants to say outright they love the other person right off the bat. It's super cute. It's super wholesome. I will admit that most of the enjoyment is probably going to be around you enjoying the expressions that the girl makes, but overall it's been a lot of fun. Number seven, I have Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting. This show is super good. <laughs> I, I really was kind of hoping that it would be good, but I'm happy that it's kind of living up to my expectations. This is essentially about a Yakuza leader who has to take care of his daughter at some point, and he leaves her care and her safety to this guy that's like one of his strongest and most violent <laughs> lackeys. He's trying to instill some sort of sense of responsibility upon his lackey, while at the same time knowing that he'll protect his daughter. So at face value, it seemed like one of those things of like, this is a rough Yakuza group, and now there's a girl involved, but it's a lot more wholesome than I thought it would be. Yes, it opens up with this guy being super violent, but the moment that he kind of leaves his jobs, it seems like he chills out a lot. He really does have a lot of respect and care for the people around him, despite the fact that he seems like he's a little rough on the outside. But it's in each of these moments that I really find the treasure in Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting. It really does seem like this guy, despite the fact that, again, he seems very violent, he has the right words to say at the right time. He always has that encouragement to give the daughter whenever she needs it. She always has fears of letting her father down, but he's always there to encourage her to try. She fears going to see her mother who's in a coma, and he has to give those encouraging words to her to kind of help her help her mother fight through the situation. It almost has that kind of contrast thing between the rough tall guy and the cute little girl that I really do enjoy. These are wholesome moments that either make you cry or just put a huge smile on your face. I cannot get enough of this series and I highly recommend it. Number six, I have Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer. Now don't turn off the video, don't turn off the video. <laughs> there is a huge, huge hatred for Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer and it's sad because I'm absolutely loving this show. Now. I will give everybody credit who has criticisms about Naz. Naz has never been my favorite studio. Naz has ruined a lot of shows for me, visually mainly, but thankfully it does seem like Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer so far is at least holding itself together. Yes, the action scenes aren't the greatest, so don't go into the show expecting visual masterpiece. You're not going to get it here. I'm going to give you that pre-warning. But underneath is what I'm looking for. The creator is the creator behind Planet With. And I absolutely love Planet With. So when Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer got announced, I was extremely excited for it. And I've heard a lot of positivity coming out of the source material for this series. And thankfully, even though I've been kind of keeping positive on the series and waiting for it to do something good, episode three started showing me those signs of this creator. They love to present a very basic idea, very kind of childlike idea, the superhero that will save the world, but always has twists in it and over time slowly twisting it more and pulling away the layers, and I'm loving seeing that so far in episode three. I want to learn more. I wanna see what twists and turns this story will take, and I cannot wait for more of the show. Again, despite the fact that it doesn't look good. <laughs> Number five, I have Shine Post. This is a huge surprise for me. Now, I will admit this is only based on the first two episodes, and this can easily go downhill. All these shows could go downhill, let's be perfectly honest, but, Shine Post is one of the ones that I don't have an idea of what's to come so far. But what it has presented me with, I'm already loving. It opens up with an idol group, Tings, and their owner currently is thinking of disbanding them. But she's going to give them one more shot. If they can fill this one venue, she will let them remain. And she's also going to assign them a new manager. The quirk in this idol show so far is that the new manager they're getting has the ability to see people that shine. The twist is that he sees the shine when people lie. And the only reason that he takes them up on their offer to be their manager is because the center never shines. Thus, she's a genuine idol. And it seems like he wants to help her shine, but not in the way of lying, just shine to the world. <laughs> And I will say, the chemistry of the characters really does make this show for me. I'm really liking these three girls. They're a lot of fun. Their chemistry itself, their quirks and everything. And again, their center and her pure nature that she wants to shine. And having her presented with a manager that really knows what he's doing. He has connections. He can really place them in places where they can shine if they so choose. Add in the fact that the studio is doing an incredible job. This visually looks fantastic. And yes, 
thankfully, they don't rely on CGI for the performances. They have used CGI, there is CGI here and there, it's mostly far away shots, but for most part, for the close-up shots, it's all 2D drawn animation. And what that does is allow me to really get the characters. I see the expressions, I see their delight, I see what they're putting into their efforts, and it really does change the game for me. We have so many idol shows where all the performances are CGI and you never get to see the expressions. You don't get to see what the character is really doing. They just look like robots on a stage. But Shine Post is different and I'm really looking forward to see what they do going in the future. Unfortunately, it's written by the creator of Orisuki and I didn't really like that show so much, but we'll see. For my number four, I have my degeneracy of the season. Yes, Harem in the Labyrinth of Another World. This show is trash and I'm liking it. It's it's one of those ones where no, I don't defend anything that's really happening in the show. But at the same time, I do enjoy watching, I guess, the lesser of the evil in the world doing what he's doing. It's about a guy that gets his guy into another world. Eventually, he ends up finding out about for servitude in this world itself. Ends up being presented this very beautiful woman as a possible buy. And he goes through this strenuous effort of raising all the money he needs in order to buy her. And the quirk to him is that he's able to both see stats of things and people, as well as change stats and jobs of himself and items. So I'm really curious to see now that he's technically purchased his first buy, if they'll kind of incorporate that into his partners in battle. That's the kind of things that the more gamey aspect that I think is really interesting. Well, yes, technically the surface is guy buying hot women. So far, visually, it looks fine. Presentation's doing well enough, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what kind of quirks this show will have, and if it's willing to not really hold back on a lot of the more touchier subjects. For my number three, I have Uncle from Another World. This show is so good. <laughs> now, I will admit that a portion of this show really is nostalgia for gaming and Sega. It essentially follows this uncle that went into a coma several years before. I mean, this is back when Saturn was still around. Sega Saturn, <laughs> that far back. And now that he's finally woken up, he tells his nephew that he, this entire time, was in another world. He was in a fantasy world where he lived his life out there. Of course, the nephew doesn't believe him until he shows him magic in this world. But not only that, he's able also to project his memories from his life in this other world and onto like a screen where they can watch all the events that unfold. And yes, his uncle is an idiot. He's an absolute idiot. No matter what would happen in this other world, whenever a scenario would play out, he would make the stupidest decisions. Like, he would never figure out this elf was in love with him. He, she's actually Sundete. He would have this quest to warm the heart of this ice queen so that she can defeat the dragon, but he just bypasses it and leaves her there. It's just all these decisions that he makes absolutely dumbfounds his nephew. It's so much fun. It has so many hilarious moments. Yes, like I said, a, a quarter of it, maybe a half of it is really around gaming and nostalgia, but they're basically trying to launch a YouTube channel. So there's a lot of humor around that. A lot of misunderstandings. Like I said, all the stupid decisions he makes in his previous life in this fantasy world bringing magic into our modern times. It's basically a reverse Isekai. It's taking somebody from a fantasy world back into our world. The Returners, basically. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I really do enjoy it. Unfortunately, on Netflix, so if you want to watch beyond, like, three weeks delay, that's the only unfortunate part. Moving on to my number two, I have Call of the Night. This show is an absolute gem for me. I am really enjoying the theme, the style, the visuals the characters, everything, the music, the music just is so good. This show is like an embodiment of everything that I really enjoy in anime. Now, the only thing I would probably say is a negative is that I feel like the main character overthinks things just a little bit too much, but everything else about this show is just, it hits me. Like, this is me. <laughs> like, the main character is me. Like, it's, it's that feeling of, like, really relating with the character that I just, can, I rarely find. Essentially about this guy that has some troubles at school. He starts to become kind of a shut-in for a while. And at some point, he sneaks out at night. And he finds a, a sense of freedom in the night. Like, going out into the streets where it's empty. And all you really have is the street lights and the stars that are really lighting anything. And he finds freedom there. And eventually, he runs into a vampire. And this vampire kind of shows him around the place and then eventually drinks his blood. And being that he's enjoying this nightlife, he's like, well, wait, am I going to become a vampire? And she's like, no, you have to love me in order to become a vampire. That's not how that works. And so he's really trying to discover what love is and so that he can fall in love with this vampire so that when she bites him again, he'll become a vampire. 
And she likes biting him because he tastes good. And over time, it's hitting on a lot of subjects like what does it mean to be a friend? It's hitting a lot on the vampire Nazana and her insecurities about love, despite the fact that, you know, she makes a lot of dirty jokes. And yes, a lot on Ko and his inability to really understand love and friendships and stuff like that. Like I said before, some of it's very relatable for me, but at the same time, some of it is overthinking certain things. But Leiden Films is doing an incredible job on the show. Like I said, it's got some great style music presentation. The interactions between the characters is just so good. It feels very natural at the same time being a little bit fantastical with the vampires and stuff. And I will say, if you are a hyper fan of Toga from My Hero Academia, Nazuna is basically Toga. <laughs> but yes, I cannot wait for more of this show. It is so good. And for my number one best new show of summer 2022 anime season so far is Licorice the Coil. This show is so good. <laughs> Licorice the Coil is so good. Like every episode of this show... I am just, I'm waiting for the episode to hit. Like right now I'm recording this and I'm just waiting for it to get on my screen. Um, it is an incredible show. Visually, it is fantastic. The action scenes are incredible. Another A1 Pictures original series. The writer is the creator of Bento. A lot of the chemistry between the characters is phenomenal. I just cannot get enough of this show. Likoris to Coil takes place in kind of a modern times Japan where they have these girls known as Likoris. And Likoris are these orphans that are raised and trained by this organization. Well, early on we follow Takina. And Takina disobeys the orders from headquarters and ends up getting kicked out of the organization, transferred over to this kind of side company, Leko Rico. And she's very upset about this. Like I said earlier, they're technically orphans raised by this organization, and now she's basically been kicked out to some side company. But at this side company, she meets another licorice named Chisato. And Chisato is a little weird. And the idea that despite the fact that licorice have the authority to basically kill because the organization will cover up anything, she uses non-lethal. And this is very foreign to Takina. She's very headstrong. She's very much March out there. She'll put a hostage in danger in order to get information. That's the kind of person Takina is. She's very driven by her own logic. Where Shisato is more about, you know, just get the job done, but at the same time, don't harm people. Your enemy today may not be your enemy tomorrow. And it's in the chemistry between Takina and Shisato that I've absolutely loved. Again, having a more headstrong person, more driven by what she thinks is logical, versus somebody that is a little more easygoing, but at the same time, very skilled. And early on, a lot of my driving force was just enjoying these characters interacting and these really incredible action scenes. And I'm not just saying action like animation or just action like as just things going off, but action that's really well thought out. I love that every one of these action scenes has these multiple facets to them. For example, in the second episode, we have this moment where Takana takes fire. So she's hiding behind this briefcase and leaning over left and right to fire. Then you have Sato kind of flanking the team and firing from above. And then later on, Sato goes in this hallway. This guy chucks a grenade. So she kicks the grenade inside of this door, closes the door, throws the person in front of the door to kind of create a shockwave that knocks him out. There's just so many cool little intricacies to the combat itself. It's not as simple as taking cover and firing back and forth. There's a lot of little steps to the combat that make it very interesting. But yes, the animation is incredible. The music's incredible. Everything is incredible. And I will say, episode three solidified the show for me. Episode three had some of the greatest moments in anime that I have ever seen. The character development that happened in that episode and the way that it was portrayed literally had me thinking on it for an entire week. This show is so good. It's so well put together. It visually looks great. The characters are great. The characters' designs are phenomenal. They love to kind of play with throwing them in different casual outfits. There's a lot of style in the show itself. It's just, I cannot get enough of it, and I cannot wait for more. But that's it for the new shows. We technically have some readaptations coming out. Tokyo Mew Mew New, I am <laughs> beyond excited for. I have been loving that every week. It is just a load of nostalgia for me. It does look like they are actually cutting out a lot of the fat. They're just going straight to the story beats, introducing all the characters. They're not doing all the filler, which for some people might be a huge plus. But at the same time, like I said, it, it they could do whatever they want because I just, Tokyo Mew Mew was one of my favorite magical girls back in the day. And I just love seeing it back. And the the new seiyus are doing a phenomenal job. Ruby Ice Queendom. Yes, Ruby is getting an actual anime. <laughs> And I've been loving it. Unfortunately, we got the first three episodes early. And so it's been like a five week late for us to get anything new. But it's been doing great so far. I'm actually pretty interested in it. I didn't think I would be. I never checked out the old series. So I'll be interested to see what they do in that series. I will say that I'm already seeing that some of the action scenes that I am think are actually really good <laughs> from the old adaptation um, are being left out, which is unfortunate. And yes, for the continuing shows, I am still absolutely 
loving summertime rendering. This show is easily going to be my top favorite anime of this year, unless they completely flub the ending. <laughs> uh, summertime rendering has been fantastic. Episode 15 absolutely floored me. The animation was phenomenal. Similar to Licorice Week Coil, it has all these kind of steps to the combat sequences that just all fits together so perfectly. It was just a phenomenal animation. Everything just blew me away. I, I can't stop. I gotta stop. Summertime Rendering is fin just phenomenal. If you're not checking it out, it's unfortunately one of those ones that's hard to find out where to watch it at unless you're in certain regions. But eventually, hopefully, whenever it fully releases on Disney or Hulu, wherever it's going, definitely check it out. It is, it's amazing. Everybody equates it to ReZero, which is... It's a fine comparison. I kind of more compare it to something like Higurashi when they cry, but it's super good. Highly recommend it. Awashi, unfortunately, I am way behind on it, but I'm still hearing people saying that it's still good. It was phenomenal what I've watched of it so far. I need to get caught up on it. Shadow House Season 2. I'm so happy Shadow House is back. Uh, this show never stops. Like, the style of it is so fantastic. The characters are great. I cannot wait to see what comes up next. They just kind of presented this nice little cliffhanger in the last episode curious to see how that kind of unfolds but yeah shadow house has a really fascinating world this concept of this shadow family that has these living dolls that become their faces and getting to all that stuff has been really incredible the the first season was easily one of my favorite animes of that year and i cannot wait to see what season two does made in abyss season two i am just beyond excitement every week when that show comes out i have to watch it it is just so weird, and I love every minute of it. It just It's so uncomfortable, but yet so intriguing. It is like the best example that Andrew has a problem, because why would you watch this when it hurts and it makes you cringe so much, but then you just love it every minute of it. The characters are phenomenal. The world itself is just so intriguing. Uh, this, this creator is a mastermind at creating just a fascinating world. Yes, Overlord's back, and I love every minute of it. <laughs> I just... There's something about Overlord, just the characters, like it just has such great characters um, and it's so morbid and so twisted and it's kind of dark setting. It, it really does revel in the idea that you're following the bad guy that has absolutely no idea what he's doing. But at the same time, he's great. <laughs> Momonga's great, despite the fact that he has no clue what he's doing and he's going to do it anyways. Um, he's like the coolest villain to hang out with and watch his crazy minions do their thing. Really, the minions are what makes the show a lot of the time. They're just, they're, they're all crazy. And yes, Don Machi is back. I, I'm, I don't really know the hook quite yet, but everybody's super hyped for it. I got a lot of flack from my impressions on the first episode because I wasn't aware that it was doing two core and that the creator was finally working with them and that every adaptation before this has been terrible because they were skipping stuff. So I'm all caught up on my news on Don Machi. <laughs> I'm not a fan, apparently. Uh, but no, I'm looking forward to season four, just based on what people saying. Like, again, them mentioning that the creators apparently getting involved this time. They're doing two cores. This is supposedly the best arc of the light novels. So all that information has me super hyped. Like, I was already hyped for the ribbon to come back. But now I'm more hyped because everybody apparently is very confident that they know what they're doing this time. Hopefully. And yeah, technically Devil's Part-Timer's back. Um, it hasn't quite got me yet. This seems like my first baby arc, so we'll see if it does something interesting. I was more of a fan of the first half of the first season, and it's kind of fell off for me since then, but I'm excited to see it kind of get back to that flavor, hopefully, if it does. And that's it. I need to stop. <laughs> I need to stop. That's all my favorites of the season so far. I hope you guys enjoy this video as always. Hopefully got you informed. There's something in there that you're interested in. If you need more information, definitely let me know. I can link you to one of my impressions video that I've done on them. I think I've pretty much done impressions videos of all these shows. But again, if you've not already, make sure to go to the comments down below. Let me know what you're most excited for, what you're enjoying the most. I'd love to hear from you guys. Additionally, if you're new to this channel, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel so you get all my content. I do news, reviews, first impressions. Impressions. If it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support the channel more, we have a Patreon link, a tips link, and a super thanks button down below. I definitely appreciate everybody that considers, and y'all take care.